Hi, based in Mississauga unit on urethral catheterization. As with all procedures, be sure to identify your patient, introduce yourself, and explain and educate your patient on the importance of the procedure that you're about to perform. As a reminder, carbolize your trolley before and after use and never traverse through the ward with an open trolley. Hand washing and donning and doffing are addressed in another video that is linked in the video card above and in the description section below. Use a straight catheter if only a one-time urine specimen is needed, if the amount of residual urine is being measured, or if temporary decompression or emptying of the bladder is required. Use an indwelling or retention catheter, also known as a Foley catheter, if the bladder must remain empty, intermittent catheterization or is contraindicated, or continuous urine measurement or collection is needed. Assess the client's overall condition. Determine if the client is able to participate and hold still during the procedure, and if the client can be positioned in a supine position with the head relatively flat. For female clients, determine if she can have her knees bent and hips externally rotated. Determine when the client last voided or was last catheterized. Be sure you have adequate lighting for this procedure. To observe proper positioning and body mechanics, you may need to be positioned on the non-dominant side of your patient or turn your work area around. The latter is not encouraged since it would be more of a challenge to get feedback from your patient, but it can be necessary from time to time. Position your patient for the procedure. Males are positioned in a supine position and females in a dorsal recumbent with their knees bent and their hips externally rota rotated. Place a waterproof pad under the patient to avoid having to change linens. Open a drainage bag and place the end of the tube in within reach. Open your sterile tray. Open your sterile equipment and don sterile gloves. Now, handling of the clean portions of equipment readying is not acceptable with one sterile and one clean hand, since when you open the inner package, you would have to reach across your tray to open it with one hand. If there is a fenestrated drape in your tray, you can apply this in order to extend the sterile field. Prepare your gauze pads, fill your syringe with sterile water, and at this point, you need to maintain one sterile and one clean hand. Your clean hand will uncap and pour the fluid, dispense the lubricant, and wipe and dispense the sterile water. For pre-packaged kits, you would have pre-filled syringes. In our local context, you will have to prepare a 10cc syringe with sterile water when you open your tray. Just remember to pull back on the syringe and inject air into the container before you withdraw fluid to avoid creating a vacuum in the container. Doff your gloves and don new sterile gloves. Test the balloon of your catheter to ensure that there are no leaks and clean the meatus. For women, spread the labia with your non-dominant hand and ensure that you have a firm but gentle pressure on the labia since the antiseptic fluid can make tissues slippery but it must not be allowed to return over the clean meatus. For men, use your non-dominant hand and grasp the penis just below the glands and, if necessary, retract the foreskin. Hold the penis firmly upright with slight tension to help straightening the urethra. Wipe the meatus using a forcep to avoid contamination of your sterile hand needed for passing the catheter. Optionally, you can place one of the emesis basins from your sterile tray in between the patient's thighs to prevent soiling of the bedding. Lubricate your catheter up to 2 to 3 inches from the tip to aid with comfort of the procedure. Ask the patient to take slow, deep breaths and insert the catheter as the patient exhales. Slight resistance is expected as the catheter passes into the sphincter. 
you may need to rotate the catheter slightly until it relaxes. If the catheter is inserted into the vagina accidentally, it is considered contaminated and it cannot be reused. It can be left in the vagina until a new catheter is inserted to help with avoiding the same occurrence. When you have urine flow back, be sure to advance the catheter another two or so inches to accommodate for the distance from the opening of the urethra to the balloon, which we will want to inflate inside the bladder. This avoids injury to the patient. For male patients, it is also common to introduce the catheter all the way to the Y port. If you are gathering a specimen, the sample can be collected at this point. Be sure to avoid touching the container with the catheter to prevent contamination. Inflate the balloon and connect the drainage bag. There is not a steadfast rule as to the order in which this should be done. However, it is suggested that you inflate the balloon before attaching the bag to prevent inadvertently withdrawing the catheter after you had just ensured placement with the presence of urine and the additional advancement. Using your sterile container also ensures sterility that is maintained until that system is closed. Wipe away any antiseptic or lube that, and replace the foreskin if you had retracted it. Hang the urine bag below the level of the bladder and avoid looping the tubing below the level of the bag. Secure the catheter to the thigh or lower abdomen of the patient as applicable. Discard gloves and make the patient comfortable. Close your dressing tray and cover your trolley before leaving the bedside. Be sure to carbolize your tray when you return to the slush room. I look forward to seeing you guys again when we deal with our unit on removal of the urethral catheter.